My first experience in Thalian Hall was in 1966 as a freshman at Wilmington College. And um, I had attended a couple of orientation sessions and two people that were very impressive to me in the orientation se sessions was uh, Claude Howell, the head of the and founder of the art department at Wilmington College, and Doug Swink, who was the founder and head of the uh, drama department. And um, I didn't, but I wasn't planning to pursue a career in theater. Uh, actually, I was planning to go to, to uh, Wilmington for two years and then transfer to Chapel Hill, major in history, and then switch to law. That was the grand plan. Well, anyway, I saw a notice about auditions, or tryouts, I believe was the word, for a 1920s musical called Good News that were being held at Thalian Hall in downtown Wilmington. And I'd never heard of Thalian Hall, never been there, even though I'd been to Wilmington many times in my life. So I uh, came down town to Princess Street and came in the old entrance and walked into this theater that I'd never heard of and went in to sort of see what was going on and there was a staircase that went to the first balcony and I went upstairs and sat in the balcony to watch the process having no plans whatsoever to participate. So I uh, sat there and was amazed at this building. It was very shabby, I have to admit that. The carpet was a, an old, red, worn and faded um, carpet. The seats were green corduroy. The walls were painted a dark gray, uh, almost an undeterminate color. Um, and the, but the proscenium arch was very striking, the same one we have today, except it was in white and pink and gold. So the primary color that jumped out at you was pink and white. That's what Thalian Hall looked like with, with some gilding. Um, and uh, so it was not particularly attractive in that sense, but this, the architecture was magnificent even in that in its shabby state and its uh, color. And I looked down stairs and I looked at the people gathered to audition and the person who was conducting the audition was the same Doug Swain that I heard give the orientation for the drama department. Well, I didn't audition that night. I came back the next night. And uh, some force evidently pulled me to come back a second time. But this time, I walked in with a group of other people who were auditioning and sort of ended up going and sitting in downstairs instead of upstairs. And they passed out little tryout sheets and so I filled out my name and filled out that, um, and there, there was a little line that said, what, uh, do you have any special talents? And I said, I do a mean Charleston. Because there had been no theater in my uh, town where I grew up in uh, at all, in high school or, or uh, in the community. But I had had dance, and I did know how to do the Charleston, so I wrote down, I do a mean Charleston. Well, I was sitting on the end of the aisle, and there was a center aisle down the row, and Doug Swink came over to me and kneeled down, and he said, excuse me, sir, and nobody had ever called me sir. I was a very young, 18 years old. And he said, you do a mean Charleston. And I said, well, yes. And he said, would you like to get up there and on the stage and do it for us? So I did, and uh, they cast me in the show as the lead dancer. And uh, I, I did every co show the college did on the Thalian Hall stage for the next four years, because at that point, basically, the, uh, the college was producing the shows here at Thalian Hall. Um, a lot of the stuff I learned later that in the 1960s it was a very down period for Wilmington. The Atlantic Coastline Railroad had announced it was leaving in 1955 and by 1960 they were completely out of the city. So 
this was only a few years into that period of time where Wilmington's largest employer had ceased to exist and um, the whole town really was in an economic slump. But I didn't notice it because I came from a little town, so it was a big town to me. But uh, things had been tough, and so Dr. William Randall, who is where the, the Randall Library comes from and Randall Drive, he was the president of Wilmington College, and he, as a young man, had been active in the theater, had worked actually professionally um, uh, in Chicago. And uh, he had an interest, and so he had combined or worked out a deal where the Thalian Association, which was a community theater group which was basically running Thalian Hall at the time, and the Wilmington College Drama Department co-presented the shows. That began in 1963. So uh, this had been going on for a couple of years when I came onto the scene and only lasted for one more year, one season, uh, after I got here. Um, so the first show was Good News, uh, a 1920s musical, and the highlight of that show was this automobile, that I remember was the automobile that Doug had brought to put on the stage. It was a working touring car, a Ford touring car, and they built a ramp that led into the entrance on the loading dock uh, on the uh, stage right side of the theater, which allowed them to drive this uh, uh, Model T convertible touring car onto the stage, and that made its appearance in the first show uh, that I was ever in. And the uh, first scene, the car would drive across the stage and a scene would take place and then it drove to the stage left side and then for the rest of the show to make an entrance from the back of the stage to the front of the stage you had to walk through the car because the car took up the entire wing space on the left side. And I remember on opening night or at least one of the nights the car wouldn't crank and so there was this whole effort to crank the Model T with the curtain down. They wanted to test it before they drove it, they had to drive it backwards to make sure that it would drive across the stage. Well, it wouldn't crank, and so the curtain was down, and the audience heard all this noise backstage, but they didn't know what it was all about. Well, finally, this sort of roaring said, row, 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 row. Finally, the car cranked, and the, uh, and the cast backstage applauded because we were so happy it meant the show could go on. And the audience didn't know what it was all about, but they knew something good had happened and it probably affected their performance, so they applauded too. So the show started applause before the curtain even went up, and the scene happened. But uh, uh, anyway, it was uh, an interesting experience uh, being on stage with a Model T car.